about it. I had to fast. I fasted and prayed and I said, God, I need encouragement. I need someone to say yes. And I know you're right with me on this show. And I just opened my, my eyes and your email came in. I screamed. I told my husband that no, she just said yes. I was so grateful. And your P and your manager just told me that send the details to me on WhatsApp. Let's talk. And I was so, so, so grateful. It was just a confirmation that I've been doing this for the past two months. So, but there was this, you know, there was just a block. I don't know what happened. Just had a block of the guests saying no, no, no. And I was like, what's going on? Until yours came on board. And when yours came on board, I sent more emails for the next, you know, event, um, shows. And they all kept saying yes. And I was like, oh, oh awesome. thank you, Jesus. <laughs> awesome. It was so, it was so beautiful. I, was, I felt so good. And I felt like, yes, I'm doing the right thing. Thank you, Reverend Laurie. I'm so grateful. Fellow people online, my family, my friends. Join your hands together with me as I welcome the beautiful, the great author, amazing administrator, a reverend, a pastor, advocate for you, Reverend Laurie Itausa. Thank, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity. I to thank share you, Mama. Thank audience. you. Thank you, Mama. My name is Ajeroke Onik Beje, and you're live on my show. And with me is an icon, amazing woman that I have loved and admired for years. And if they had told me I'm going to get this contact with you this soon, I will say it's a lie. <laughs> I never <laughs> say for me this close. And I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you for honoring me, Ma. I am grateful. I'm grateful. Thank you. So let's Thank roll. Exactly. Because people are online already and they're excited to meet with you. You know, and funny enough, guys, do you know that today is grandma dawson's birthday Yay! and reverend is here with us celebrating with the you know she's supposed to be online with the family she didn't just accept the invitation she's not even in the country she's far away in the, from the country and she still honored us and they even have a big family event it's the seventh, seventh birthday of mama dawson and you know reverend is still here with us said uh, okay after the show she will join the family please put your hands together for reverend Lori. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for the thank love. You. Thank you for thank having you so much, me. I really thank appreciate you. the opportunity. Thank you. We we appreciate you more. We appreciate you more. Thank you so much. So let's let's roll. Let me let me ask you. The team is beyond culture. You're growing up in the Western world, and now by marriage you are in Nigeria. When you first got into this country, how was it for you? How was it breaking that barrier of culture? You know, seeing beyond what. Did you have any, any, you know, your parents back in the States, your father is a reverend, he's a doctor, and he also, a, your mom is also a pastor. So you are, you know, you are, you have the foundation of a strong Christian, and now you are going to a different world. Have you ever been to Nigeria before marriage? Yeah, so I first came to Nigeria when I was 11 years old. Um, wow. And that was before we met the Idahosas. I came to Anugu. Uh, with my dad and a friend of his, uh, Archbishop uh, Victor Onigbo, a beautiful, beautiful family. And mm. so uh, we came at 11 years old, spent time with our family, ministered with them. Um, and then when we came back to the U.S., that's when my father met uh, the great Archbishop Bensonita Hosa. So I think I was like 12 years old when they met. And they developed a, a friendship and a mentorship type of relationship. And Papa Idahosa invited the the Whetstones uh, to come to Nigeria to um, to participate in some ministry functions with him. So when I was 13, I came uh, back to Nigeria for the second time, and um, that time I went to uh, Benin City, and that's when I met my husband. And between 13 and 28, when I eventually got married. Um, I had traveled all over Nigeria with Papa Idahosa and my father um, Ooh, doing crusades, doing missionary trips, evangelism, um, and not just Nigeria, lots of other African countries as well. So um, Nigeria was not foreign to me when I got married. It wasn't like um, somebody who was just born, raised, born, and yeah, isolated in, in a little corner <laughs> of Delaware. Uh, coming to move there. I, I had enough exposure to the culture and to the environment to know really what uh, what I was involving myself in. And um, yeah, and I've loved it ever since. Hey, yes, you did. <laughs> and for Bini City, Bini is a big kingdom in Nigeria. It's it all the beautiful and lovely heritage. Bini's culture is, is seen to be very, 
you know, very firm on like the other yeah. cultures they live. So Bini is more like it's Bini Kingdom. We call it Bini Kingdom. That tells yes, you a lot. That's what it's called. Yeah. You don't, you don't talk with their culture. And now you you grew up as a teenager coming around, you know. Now you want to take one of their best of the best sons. <laughs> but were you were you well accepted? Were you well accepted? Well, I I wouldn't say that I was taking him. I would say that I was adding to him. Uh, because oh, great. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't take him anywhere. I came and moved in with him. So um so let's say the Benin Kidam added me instead of oh, me taking fantastic. anyone away. Oh, I like um, that. Fantastic. Yeah, but yeah. so the 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 people in Benin have been phenomenal actually. Um, they kind of have this reputation of being so firm and culturally yeah, grounded, yeah, you know, where yeah, you, can't, you yeah. can't touch their culture. But I found True. that they've been very accepting, very loving, um, very supportive. And and those that haven't been, uh, you know, which, of course, every every new bride, whether you're yeah. even a Benin yeah. bride marrying a Benin man, no. you're going to deal yeah. with that. So um, anyone who wasn't accepting or, or embracing of me, I believe that over time, um, you know, one of the things that I always tell people is that um, when you need to get over a bad reputation, you do it with good behavior. And, um, you know, coming in, I had the issue of uh, people looking at me as being a foreigner, people looking at me as being, of course, white, um, an American. And then all of the things that they think about white American women um, were the things that I had to carry on my head, even though they weren't my challenges, but everything that they see in movies that white American women do, um, people suddenly thought that that was who I was and that was my personality and those were my morals. And, um, yes. you know, I was I was fighting a lot of these interesting um, cultural uh, beliefs about me that that weren't necessarily true. And so um, the way that I was able to combat those types of preconceptions or preconceived ideas uh, was just basically by by proving them wrong. So mm. you know, they they were perceiving me as you know white ladies are loose, white ladies divorce their husbands, white ladies yeah. aren't good mothers. You know they had all these preconceived ideas of what um, of what white women are like, um, especially maybe because the missionaries came in um, and they they did a lot of work and then they disappeared, and yes. so there's a lot of this um, perception in the culture that um, you know white people aren't afraid to come in and do the work. But they're not going to stay. They're not. They're yeah. going to. They're going to come in and run. be there for a period and run exactly as soon as you really show them yourself. They're going to disappear. Mm -hmm. And so it was. It was exciting to be able to um, to 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 fight through that, but not fight through it with um, you know with words and with anger mm -hmm. and all of that, but just by showing them um, a different side of of what um, what I could bring to the table and that I could acclimatize. And something yeah. else that really helped me a lot um, moving into the culture and moving into Benin was that I had to say, you know what, Nigeria is not going to change for me. Benin's not mm. going to change for me. The family's not going to change for me. I have to change for it. I'm coming to their world. Um, they're not coming to my world. So, ladies, you know, when, ladies, are you hearing that, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's true when they, when Nigerians come to the U.S. or they come to the U.K. or anywhere that they uh, immigrate to, you find that they adjust to the culture of their environment. They change their accents, they change their clothing, um, they change their 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 perceptions of life, um, their yeah. work ethics, everything adjusts to the environment. And so I had to put myself in those same shoes and adjust to the environment and the culture of, of the Nigerian and especially the Benin Kingdom. And, um, you know, and it's not everything about the Benin Kingdom that I fully embrace. Um, you yeah. know, they're very, um, they're very uh, rich into um, some ancestral things yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And, and so, you know, the, culture, the culture is deep, really rooted, very yes, deep. Very, very deep. And so we have a God culture in our family uh, where mm -hmm. if it doesn't align with the word of God, uh, we don't uh, embrace it. Uh, you know, so not everything in the Benin culture is a part of our home. Uh, however, a lot of it, a lot of it is, and and we've been able to um, to kind of blend the two cultures together and come up with the Lari and Feb culture. Fantastic! Thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you for the gentlemen and the ladies. When you get married to you know a family, whether it's within Nigeria, outside Nigeria, this is one tip. tip. 
the Reverend is sharing with us, you need to understand that the whole family can't change because of you. You have to be flexible enough to pick some, the ones you can't stand with, in love, in positivity. Show to them that it can be a different thing. Let them change their perception, not with fight. I like that. Thank you so much, Ma, for those insights. That, that's very insightful. Thank you for the young ladies or those that are having issues with their family in laws. These are tips that you could, you know, you could use. It's not by violence, it's not by being difficult. Learn to be a little flexible. Thank you. Thank you. So share with us. You are a daughter of a pastor. You are married into a like a what will I say? Like we all we all um, grew up to know Papa Dowson, a man that every name every 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 everybody knows him to be a strong household name in the whole of nigeria Africa, all over the world even all over the world and now your mind your family is a very strong family as well the western very strong now your mind to another strong family strong personalities coming together spiritually and physically it's huge tell share with us where the expectations are for you did you ever dream of marrying someone in such, you know, in such family or how did you connect with, you know, with your husband to know this is where I want to be, number one. And number two, for the strong families coming together, how were we able to meet up the expectations? Because I know you have a lot of, a lot of um, ministering works that you have to do, prayer sections, all that. But I see you as a woman. You're also an entrepreneur. You're an administrator. You, you now you're doing modeling. You're modeling for um what's that brand? <laughs> okay, and all that. And so you do a whole lot. You know, how are you able to, you know, to relate all this together and still be focused? Well, those are two very loaded questions. Um mm -hmm. Uh, no, I never married into the Idosa family because of the ministry. Um, mm. I married into them because I love Feb. And I think that that was um, really critical for that decision path. Yeah. You know, a lot of people that marry into prominent families are marrying because of the um, the financial security that they feel they might yeah. have, or they're mm. married into them because of the platform that they might get. Uh, because of being a, a wife or a husband of, of this particular person. Um, so I was I was very particular that if I didn't ever get on the Itahosa platform, if the Itahosas never embraced my ministry, if they never embraced my gifts or my the abilities that God has placed on the inside of me or the purpose that God has given me, it wasn't going to stop me from loving their, their son. It wasn't going to yeah. stop me from loving Feb marrying Feb and being a part of Feb's life. So I didn't come in with an expectation to um, be an heir or an expectation to be a daughter or um, to uh, partake in any of the ministry um, activities. Although um, God has blessed me with lots of opportunities since I got married um, and he's, yeah. he's created so many open doors, um, I didn't come into it, you know, looking for that. Um, yeah. You know, and if that was taken away, which there was a period of time that um, they didn't fully embrace uh, where I was coming from. Uh, there was a period of time that I did a lot of sitting back and um, mm -hmm. and watching and waiting and um, participating from a from a, um, a sideline. Um, and that was fine. You know, there's different seasons and different things. You were so fine with it. You were fine. You didn't have an issue with that. Uh, no, I didn't have an issue with that until it got to the point where I felt that the season had changed. Um, mm. You know, I, I really, I appreciated the season of sitting back. Um, I appreciated the season of learning and embracing and understanding because I believe that it added a lot of value to myself. It also, it gave me a lot of um, perspective that I wouldn't have had if I was just thrust out there in the very beginning. Um, you know, I didn't understand the culture the way that I would as a wife. You know, you can understand a culture as a visiting minister and you can get away with certain things because you're a visitor. But when you become a wife, the whole the whole game has changed. And so I, I did need to sit back and I needed to learn. I needed to observe um, and I needed to kind of find my own uh, place in the midst of it all. And um, and I believe that I have, you know, I believe that God has, yeah. has really yes, you have. Um, yes, you helped, have. Me, helped me in that process. Mm -hmm. And then when I was ready for a change of season, then. You know, God has been faithful to me and has given me that change of season. And, um, you know, and, and it came just when I was ready for it. So, so yeah, um, I, I, 
it, it wasn't it wasn't about the um the platform that the great oh, um, hostess could give me um in, in any way um and i'm yeah. sorry i missed your second question the second question now i like the fact that you helped me with the journey explaining the journey i like i like that that it was about the sun you loved him first the platform was just like an added value to it the, the purpose initially was the love you have for Pastor i'm sorry Febby, which you have to excuse me for one minute my kids are knocking on my door just one second real quick my apologies motherhood everyone motherhood please <laughs> thank you Allow her. I hope I'm he's allowed. Yes, she is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, she is. So I, I hope, hope everyone can see if you, if you, if you, if you're telling God, God, I need, I need, I need, I need. Hope you're ready for all these things, you know. And this is fantastic. I wish someone can record this and then it will make it go viral. <laughs> Pastor, you know, Reverend Lori had to leave to attend to her kids. They're knocking, banging on the door. Okay. Quite often. It's the reason why you're here. Yeah, it's the reason why you're here. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry he, he wanted his Nintendo. It was charging in my room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, mom. Thank you. That's 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 cool. Um. Okay, so the question was, thank yeah, God you said that, that. Sorry, Judah that wants to say hello. Hold on yes, one second. Come on, sweetheart. Let us say hello. Hello. Hi, Charlie. Is this, is this Jordan? This is Judah. This is the last oh, one. That's my favorite name, Praise. Jordan means praise. Awesome name you have, the young man. And you look so yeah. much happy, even though you have mommy's color, look like our own. Yes, you know, you're a Niger boy. Can you speak pigeon? Me, I, a little bit. Oh, yeah, let's try. Say hello to me in pigeon. Alpha. Hi, <laughs> JJ. That's my guy. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Where are the brothers? They are not around. <laughs> no, they're playing game. They're playing for now. Come and say hello to us. Come and say hello when they're free. Let them come and say hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see you at the next 45 minutes. We're still with them. Oh, oh that was so cool. Ah, that's a proper ninja boy there. Ah, <laughs> are you so firm? Fantastic, man. Thank you. Thank you for allowing him to show the show. Thank you so much, man. No problem. So, uh, I was asking you put me i like your responses i now i am seeing why the lord asked me to just bring you on the show thank you you took me through the journey that you had to wait you had to learn and when you saw that it was time you knew it was time and you connected so when you knew it was that oh this is nathaniel yes this is nathaniel not how are you i'm fine sit up a little taller sit on my sure. say hello to everybody say hello 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 can you speak pigeon too Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Speak with you. Let me hear you. Somebody. No one's speaking to you now. Say hello to me, Pigeon. Say hello to me. Uh-uh. Who knows this? No be here, so. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speak Pigeon. If you speak beneath Pigeon, let me hear. Just say hello to everyone. I'm not no. there. He's no, no, don't, just, don't run away. Don't run away. He, he looks like the very calm one. Jordan yeah. looks more like my friend one yeah huh? he looks like he is so not yeah. calm he is everything but calm <laughs> oh okay Where, where's feb junior where's feb junior will feb even agree feb is 12. you know when you're 12 he's you a big boy no we won't, we won't stress him we'll stress him we we'll we'll see if, feb, if feb's no, willing if he comes in fantastic if he doesn't then um just understand that he's fine. 12. Yeah. We understand. We understand. It's the teenage. It's the beginning of the teenage years. So we understand. Yes. It's a big point. His own word. So it's fine. It's fine. Thank you so much, Ma, for allowing them to say hello to us. We appreciate no it. So I was saying that you took us through the journey of how you had to wait to learn to see what's going on, and when you knew it was time, you just connected and you let them know that it was time. But you had a lot to do: school administrator, pastoring, missionary, advocacy. You know. Also, you have three books that you've written. Fantastic yeah. books and both. Congratulations, Ma. Fantastic. So how were you able to put all this together in an environment that, you know, takes a whole lot from us? We know the Nigerian environment takes a whole lot. You know, yes, we get help yeah. here and there, but, you know, it still can not be, you know. It's okay, honey. Let him play, okay? Judah, yeah. can Mommy do this right now? Judah, do you need a younger sister, a younger brother? Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think he wants to share mommy. Do you want to share mommy? Um, I think it was 
Rose in mind. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine no 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 issues it's fine it's fine so please allow me to respond to us we'll get back to you guys what is a picture can you can you let me do this thank you sweetheart thank no worry we'll call you back on the show thank you <laughs> it's her show it's my show my name is Adirunke. it's my show don't worry you get to do this with me soon <laughs> yeah sorry about that um, no no it's fine it's fine no it's fine no, it's right we're not having i i, I understand America. very well no it's sorry one second in america that we're good no you need to, good to have um, nate judah grandma's birthday. yes we're gonna have grandma's birthday in just a few minutes no, oh. yes in yes when we're done so that means it'll be seven o'clock it'll be eight o'clock in nigeria How? yes can can you please judah thank you <laughs> All right. Sorry, once really you know, like, why? When are I'm we having fun. Like a, reality, like a reality show, and it's just fun. <laughs> I think he thought that we were online doing grammar. Yes, I think they are depriving them from saying hello. He thought maybe it's the, it's the party for grandma. I think so he was so, wondering yeah. why they are not included. So I understand, my It's fine. Exactly. It's fine. So tell us, how do you juggle all of this together? Yeah, so the way that I do it is I just basically have the mentality of um, wherever I am, I try to be 100% there, which obviously didn't quite work with this interview. Um, but, but, um, but yeah, I try to, I try to be focused um, in whatever I'm doing. So if it's mm -hmm. uh, church work, you know, I'm a senior pastor of one of our Church of God mission branches. Um, if it's church work, when I'm in church, I'm focused on church and I'm not focused okay. on family and university and business. And mm -hmm. I'm not trying to... Uh, you know, mesh all the mesh all of them mm. together. Um, so yeah, I believe it's really important to stay focused on whatever you're doing at the time. Um, you know, and so that's that's kind of the way that I've been able to balance many things. Um, is is I'm able to um, kind of have this uh, you know compartmentalization mentality where I'm able yeah. to say, okay, right now if I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book. Um, if I'm mm. doing this, I'm doing that. If I'm if I'm parenting, like right now I'm in the U.S. I've been here since the 3rd of July. Uh, we came in on the evacuation flight. Um, you know, so right now my focus is just my children. And so, you know, I take a few things like this, a few opportunities to share. But other than that, I'm not I'm not doing a million other things. I'm cooking for the kids. I'm cleaning. I'm being mommy. I'm doing all the mommy, mommy, mommy things. And, um, and that's and that's the season that I'm in this particular month. And yeah. and. And it's interesting that that when I when we take these times out, like to have like the month or two months of being just mommy, um, it really carries them far. And, and what it does in their memory is 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 remarkable. Um, so they know that you know mommy can do all this. Mommy does do all this. Mommy does you know put everything aside just for them. And um, you know, and so that's kind of what I that's kind of the way that I do. In the same way with my husband, uh, when we're having family time and I'm I'm spending time with him. You know, I'm not on my phone at the same time. I'm, I'm very deliberate about giving him my full attention. And I think that that's what's really helped our marriage and our relationship as well, is that um, both of us are very intentional about um, giving our undivided attention when we're together. You know, for example, this morning, I, uh, I had a long video call with him this morning and I needed to do a thousand things. I mean, my my world was turned upside down um, and I had a million things on my plate to do, but he needed my attention. And so I put everything aside and I just focused on him and, and that makes him feel valued. And I think mm -hmm. that's an important, um, important aspect of any successful relationship is okay. to be able to, um, to compartmentalize all the other things and give your yeah. undivided attention to the one that you're with. And, um, and okay. that, that works for me professionally, personally, um, and mm -hmm. all of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that insight. Creating time for every task. If you know you're doing this, then face it and do it and be done with it. Don't do different things at the same time. Let every role, you know, value what you stand for. The family, yeah. the children, the husband, the work, the missionary, everything knows that, okay, this is the time for me. Like now, like you said, you're in US right now with the kids. So the kids know it's mommy time, mommy's with us, and they are cool with it, and that's fantastic. The memories stay for a long time with them. Yeah. The mommy always that's wonderful. Thank you for that insight, Ma. Can I now ask again, when you now, when you do all those things, now 
based on the Nigerian environment, the culture, you have your ideas, you know, you have, you know, the foreign ideas. How do you strategize? Does it break your, okay, somebody's even asking the same question. That's my husband. That How do you now use that strategy? You know, how do you push your own ideas without anyone feeling, you can't come out, there's this mentality that, uh, uh this is the way we do it. This is the way we do it. It has to be that way, you know, that kind of a thing. So when, and some believe, if it's not broken, why change it, you know? So how do you bring in new ideas, new strategy? How do you manage it and still be able to keep the value, the focus and the goal? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, I try not to have my strategies or my ideas or my values um, be because of my Western culture. Um, if, if I'm going to bring something new to the table, it's going to be because it's God culture. It's going to be because it's based on the word of God. And then I have the full backing of the word of God for whatever it is that I'm bringing to the table. Um, I don't have to turn the university into a Western university. Um, but in the God culture, there's some things that are done in Nigerian universities that aren't acceptable in a Christian community or in a Christian culture. So um, I'm not bringing Western ideas. I'm bringing God ideas. And yes. so I'm very deliberate to make sure that Christ is the center um, of whatever change I'm trying to inspire, whatever change I'm trying to bring. And when Christ is the center of that change, then it's a lot easier to um, to bring the 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 whole um, the whole thing to bar and then you don't have to defend it by this is just what i want or this is how we do it over there or we're better than you uh, mentality which is very an effective way of of trying to communicate um you're not you're not communicating that you're saying this is what the word says um okay. and since the word says this then this is what um what we're going to do with it so, so i think that that's that's the key to um, being effective like, in that, like in that regard. thank you thank you for that answer it's not about the what culture it's not about the western it's not about the african it's about god's culture as long as it's within god's word then we, we can make it work and we can do it fantastic thank you so much ma thank you for that now let's come to the elite kind of emotional part that a lot of long ladies when they saw your publicity can you, let me say this to you ma'am when we posted your the advert that you're going to come on the show i got a lot of i even told my obit i never knew people love pastor Lor laurie this much because uh, you know, she's amazing a story about fertility you know encouraged me to stay motivated to believe that god can do anything you know a whole lot of people were like this is fantastic we love you and I'm sure Pastor Lori might not know people have been watching her for years. She just keep doing her thing, you know, just keep on. But one thing I know, because I've been following you on, on Instagram, I know that for every response, you always, either you like or you respond. You always, always find a way to show, you know, your followers that you appreciate their feedback. And that's, that's, that's fantastic for me. So now we are coming to the fertility part. It was a, it was a big journey. It was a yes, big journey. Lots of ladies are still going through it. Young ladies, like I, when I speak to young teenage girls, I tell them that there is no woman that it has been tested on their bodies that they are going to wait for a while. So <laughs> darlings, get to know that no woman has it tested. No woman is has been told that you won't get married on time or you won't have babies on time or this will happen to you. Life just happens. Yeah, so don't feel that this is for them. This is for me. Yes, you should pray, you should be positive. But when it happens, know that you need these tips to help you manage, you know, and scale through with the word of God and grace. Reverend Laurie, share with us. Mother okay. journey. Okay, so first of all, let me just go back to your, your previous comment about uh, why, about how I'm always, except liking people's likes, yeah. liking people's you know, I believe that if somebody takes time to um, to reach out to you, if somebody takes time to write something, they say something, then the very least that you can do is acknowledge it. And so, yeah. um, you know, I think that's just mutual respect. And if you're not ready to give mutual respect, then, you know, I just kind of don't believe you should be in that space, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, because I'm not I'm not one of these people who believes that we should be here and somebody else should be here. God made us all equal in his sight. And one is not more important than the other. So if one of God's children chooses to reach out, I believe that it's important to respect them and to um, communicate back. Um, Thank you. 
Thank you. In one way or Thank another. You. Although, of course, Thank I can't you. do as much as I'd like, you but I do, yes. as, I do as much as I can. Yes, um, you do. I'm, 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 I'm a testimony of that. You, I, res, I, I put my comments and you always, always like, and I always look forward. So I, I always look forward to post putting the comment because i know you definitely either you like or you say thank you or something it's always sweet when i see oh, that I mean, thank you so much motivate me thank you mom thank you i appreciate that so um on to the uh motherhood journey motherhood. Uh, you know when we got married we were told we couldn't have children uh we didn't know this until after we were already married uh we tried within our first year to have children and we were told that we were 99.9 percent .9 infertile and wow. of course, um, living in the Benin culture, that's a really big deal uh, because yeah. the um, the pressure on the woman to provide a child or an heir, especially a male heir, um, is is quite intense. And so, yeah. um, you know, I'm great. I'm very, very grateful that my husband's family didn't put um, that kind of pressure on me. I'm, I'm grateful that my husband's family um, understood for the most part understood where i was coming from what the challenges were they were facing and they joined with us in faith um i didn't feel the attack that many women uh feel coming from their their in-laws and i i'm really grateful to uh, mama idahosa for that uh, mama idahosa had her own infertility journey uh before having her four four biological children and i think it also helped that she went through that, um, you know, over 40 years before 30, wow. 30 some years before we went through ours. Um, it, it helped because that was part of her story. That was part of her journey. So when her daughter-in-law was experiencing it and her son was experiencing it, um, she had already been there and known mm -hmm. um, the, the pressure and the challenges. And she was quite supportive um, as well as my parents were quite supportive um, through the process, extremely supportive. Um, so we were we went through the the pain of infertility, um, the pain of of being told that we couldn't um, have children and being told that uh, this was a life issue for us. But in the middle of the pain, we also had a lot of support, and I think that that's um, really critical for people that are going through delays in life. Um, if you're going through delay in marriage, a delay in childbearing, a delay in your business or, or in finding a job or something like that. Um, finding people who love you unconditionally, finding people who accept you unconditionally. It may or may not be your family. It might be another another relationships that you have, okay. other relationships. I mean, sometimes you can't get that from your family because they're not yeah. spiritually or emotionally mature yeah. enough to give you that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, but you need it from somewhere. You need it from someone. Um, you need to know that you're loved unconditionally and and that you're supported regardless of what you're able to produce. And um and that's something that we had. Um, my parents and and his mother uh, were extremely unconditionally supportive, and uh, and that helped a lot. Uh, but we did go through that that journey. We did IVFs. We did it very privately. We didn't uh, tell anyone uh, because at this time now we're going back uh, 14 years, uh, more than 14 years. We've been married 18 years. And we found yeah. out in our first. So we're, we're going back, you know, quite a, quite a little bit of time. And that was when IVF was not even known in, in the culture, in the community in Nigeria. Um, we may have had one or two clinics that were doing it, but it wasn't a, um, a household name by any means. Uh, people didn't really even know what it stood for. And to start um, telling people that we're going to... Um, a doctor and they're going to create a baby in a petri dish for us and then insert the baby into our womb would have been uh the learning curve would have just been yeah. huge and it, um, and, it, and it cost the fortune at that time yes it did it did uh, but we went through it quite privately um and and i'm grateful that we did because when we came out of it um we came out of it able to share our testimony and um mm -hmm. and able to show people you can get on the other side of it uh, so we didn't we didn't carry the world along when we were crying. We didn't carry the world along when we were having failed IVFs or looking for the resources to pay for the IVFs. Um, we did that just with our immediate family, and I believe that that was a that was a decision that really helped strengthen us through it, so that we didn't have all the voices coming. I mean, at, at the time, um, it was yeah, at the time it was very. Um, unacceptable and, and it still is in some in some communities and some environments there's still a lot of people who say you know oh you know if god didn't give you the child you know through natural conception then yeah. you're forcing god's hand and and so many things like that so um you know we we just we chose how much we, we want to expose ourselves 
And, um, and I believe that we made the right choice. Uh, so we had our first baby through IVF. Um, you know, he was born in 2007, but unfortunately he died after he was born. He only lived for a very short period of time. And then, um, even though he was full term, um, but then God blessed us with three natural pregnancies. Uh, without IVF, just totally blew the doctor's minds, blew our minds. Um, so he's been he's been faithful to us. And I believe that he trusted us with that journey and he trusted us with that particular um, experience because he knew that we would turn the glory back to him. And mm. I think it's so important, whatever challenges that we go through, whatever journeys that we face, whatever issues and mountains we have to climb, uh, it's it's so essential for us to to that when we get on the other side, when we get to the point of the testimony, when we get to the point of the miracle, that we say, you know what? It wasn't by my might. It wasn't by my power. It was by the spirit of God. It wasn't by my ability to 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 raise the money. It wasn't my ability to. Um, I, I it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with Him, and even down to the point of saying it, it wasn't our faith. Um, that mm -hmm. created the babies. You know, a lot of people, they, especially in the ministry world, um, they come mm -hmm. back and they say, you know what? I have the power That's now, it. you know, yeah. because God gave me three miracle babies and the anointing is on me to pray for you <laughs> to have the miracle babies. And, you know, and, and they, they merchandise the anointing. And I yeah. think that that's, um, that that's a very slippery slope. It's a slippery slope when it comes to Christendom. Um, so we're, we're not merchandising the anointing. Uh, we're not telling people we have some miracle baby oil. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're not, um, in fact, there's, there's one crazy thing on, on, on social media right now that's been driving me, that's been driving me nuts. There's somebody mm -hmm. who's using our likeness and our story and adding some embellishments and selling, um, uh, they're selling this product for, um, uh, for fibroid removal. And we're like, what is this? Because we never even had fibroids. And they're, mm. they're saying that that was my journey. And I use this fibroid, herbal, whatever, whatever. And they're making serious money off of our name. And, I, and I, it, it, just, it just disgusts me that, that, that people would, um, would merchandise what God does. And, mm. and I believe that that's probably why God trusted us with such a remarkable experience is because he knew that we would turn people back to him. And we would have people's faith anchored in him, not in their own capacity. Mm. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Please allow me to say yes. that. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, so, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for your testimony. I've read your story more than once. I've read it several times. I'm about to share with people. I shock you. I just, it just occurred to me now because I put a lot of posts on my Facebook. I, I just share people's stories. I share mine. I, I, you know, I share articles, and it just occurred to me that precisely like four years ago, I, I put up a post about your story on my wow. Facebook. Wow! Yes, I remembered now. It just occurred to me that I, I I made a post about your story for women in waiting. Like God can do it for Reverend Laurie, then He can do it for everyone. And I like the fact that you just said it right now. That for. God trusted you with this journey because he knew you were going to return the glory back to him. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing the beautiful journey with us. And I know a whole lot. Please share with the women listening to you right now. I, I have a connection right now. I have a, a strong feeling that God is about to change someone's story. Someone that is watching this, you know, that is watching us online right now. Someone that is listening to us right now. There's a wait, there's a woman that is waiting, there's a man that is waiting, trusting God for the same miracle that you had, you know, for fruitfulness. Please, please, Reverend, share with us prayers. Just say one or two things for them, you know. What what is the Lord leading your heart to, to say to these ones, trusting God? You know, I believe that we all go through seasons, and I believe that the seasons are meant to make us stronger, not meant to break us down. And so I want to encourage you that whatever season you're in, whatever it is that you're facing, whatever mountain you feel like you have to climb and you might even feel like you're climbing it all alone. I want to encourage you that God is with you, that he's yeah. never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's the omnipresent God. He's the one who is able to be the, the one that parts the Red Sea. He's the one who's able to, to calm the waves. He's the one who's able to 
to open up the blindness. He's the one who's able to do the supernatural. And so I want you to acknowledge his sovereignty. I want you to acknowledge his grace and his power in your life and remain focused on him, remain focused on on the words that he's given you through scripture and the words that he's given you through the prophetic realm and just begin to war after those prophecies in the realm of the spirit stand and having done all continue to stand i don't want you to give up i don't want you to throw in the towel i don't want you to feel weak or inept but i want you to know that with god all things are possible and when he has promised it if he said he will do it he will do he it will do it and I want to just encourage you, um, ladies and gentlemen that are watching um, today that, that listen, God is faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promises. And I want you to stay steadfast in your waiting period. Whatever it is that you're waiting for, if you're waiting for a spouse, for a child, for a business to flourish, for a job, for a, an admission to school, for a visa, whatever it is that you're waiting for, if you know that God is directing you in this way, then God will certainly be faithful to his promises. Amen. He will certainly Amen. be faithful to his word. Amen. And Amen. in the waiting season is an opportunity for you to draw closer to him. It's an opportunity for you to draw closer to his word and to really develop those strong relationships with people who can link arms together in faith with you. You know, one can put 1,000 to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And I don't want you to um, ignore the reality that you're not in this alone. And that yeah. when you allow somebody to strengthen you, when you find your circle, when you find your people, when you find mm -hmm. the people who can empower you through this process, then you're going to be a lot stronger than than what you would be if you try to go through Amen. it in isolation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lori. Thank you. Amen and amen. And I trust that God will do it for someone right now listening or watching us that the story is going to turn around for you, good, and you will remember to say, thank you, Lord. I pray you remember and you don't shut the door to you share the story and you share the testimony as well. Thank you so much, Pastor Lori. Share with us as we, we will go round off very soon. How did you feel when you when when uh, Febby became one year old? I was that, <laughs> how was the feeling? How was the feeling? How was the oh joy? Lord, when Feb Jr. became one, uh we lit well see we didn't we we didn't <laughs> Oh, we were just like so blown away that we had not just a one-year-old, but that we had a living child, you know, because when you had gone through the pain of loss, um, when you have a child that survives, it it's a whole, the the, the joy is, is unspeakable. And so when Feb Jr. turned one, I haven't remembered this for a while. Um, when he <laughs> turned one, we actually had this massive massive birthday party for him um, wow. we had bouncing castles and i mean he he came in we had this little go-kart this little small vehicle and we put a hat on him and we rode him around the crowds and we invited so many people and i didn't care how much it cost me like for me this was my this that yeah. for me that was like my testimony that my baby what has lived is. I have a child that has made it through that infant period and is alive and is one year old. And so we we were no holes barred. We were all out. Uh, my parent, I remember my mom flew in. I had people that flew in from out of the country for his one year birthday party. Um, we just went all out. It was it was remarkable. And, uh, oh, and I would do it again and again and again because it was just oh. for us a testimony of God's oh, faithfulness. God. Oh, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really wanted to hear that because I know for women in waiting, the one year birthday of the first child is always amazing, always beautiful. And you know, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that it was a big deal. Like, I really <laughs> didn't until I experienced it. And I'm like, oh, no, the whole world needs to know. And I, mean, I promise you, we did it bigger than like a wedding. I had canopies. I invited, wow. oh yeah, I invited all the staff of the hospital. We have Faith Metaplex <laughs> Hospital. I invited the staff. I invited the staff of the university. I invited all the pastors <laughs> from Church of God Mission. Um, like, so I, I wasn't playing. <laughs> like, 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 what do they call it? Uh, like a concert or a carnival? It like was a, a carnival. It was, it was a carnival because we had rides. We had all kinds of. We were, I was crazy though. No, I was like, you know what? This birthday is going to be celebrated. <laughs> amen, amen. I like that. Thank God. And more celebrations will come in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, amen. But thank God. So share with us now. Let's round off with your administrative roles, your advocacy. How do you manage, um, you know, culture in between what career now? 
being an administrator, you seem like a very prompt person. You seem like a very detailed person. You have structures for this. This your principles. How do yeah. you manage principles with doing in performance and in excellence? You know, at the school and at the hospital where you you're a director and all that. How do you manage it? How do you try to bring yourself into your staff to be able to perform as you expect from them? You know, I I think that Nigerians are not given enough credit. I think that people mm -hmm. have this mentality that Nigerians are not hardworking, um, that mm -hmm. they're lazy in the working environment, but they are not. Nigerians are some of the most loyal, hardworking people. I'm telling you, um, they're phenomenal and, and extremely intelligent. And I think that it's important that we, uh, one of the things that I do in our administrative structure is, is we give the people who are in leadership roles, we give them the opportunity to lead. Uh, we don't micromanage them. Uh, we allow them to create, we allow them to lead, um, and we allow them to make their own mistakes um, mm. and learn from their mistakes and get stronger in the process. And so um, our leadership style is, is ever evolving um, and we're ever learning about how to be better leaders. Uh, you know, we, we own a school, Nathan American Academy, uh, mm. right in Benin, one of the most, uh, actually probably the best just, um, yes. elementary yes. and middle, middle schools. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, we, we we have a lot of different things that we're doing, but in that, uh, we give the people who are in our positions of leadership the opportunity to flourish. And we also reward them. So um, if you do well, if if the school does well, everybody does well. Um, well. You know, if, if there's bonuses and increase and profit and all of that that's coming to, to the institution, then we share that profit down the road. We share it with all the people who participated in that profit-making venture. Uh, we're, yeah. we're probably some of the most generous bosses that exist when it comes to, um, to profit sharing and bonuses and um, giving people um, opportunity to also be close to us, to have access um, to yeah. bounce their ideas mm -hmm. and their thoughts off that's of good. us. Um, mm. You know, where we try our best to be as um, as 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 loyal to the dream and as loyal to also the progress of the people who are making that dream happen. And and I, I think Nigerians, I mean, I work predominantly with Nigerians and in, in all of our different business ventures in Nigeria, and they're phenomenal. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal people to work with and um, I'm willing to go the extra mile. And I. I think that that's the the people that we have in our in our circle that work with us. They're people who they don't um, say I'm only I'm closing by four and don't call me after four. Um, no, they're people that are willing to get a call at at, at ten o'clock mm -hmm. at night, and they're you know if if not that we call them all the time at ten at night, but yes, you yes, know if if yes. something comes up that needs their attention, emergency. Yes. Yeah, they're ready. And they're willing, mm. and and it's it's a beautiful environment to work in, and it's still evolving. Mm. I mean, especially in the education sector, uh, working in Ben Sidosa University, you're dealing with um, a very strong education culture that is different than the Western world. Uh, but we've been able to again bring in the God factor and the God yeah. culture, and and adjust some things uh, creatively, and um, and really create our own environment that reflects the values that that we have for the institutions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Laurie. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Ah, I wish I'm your staff, you know, <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the beautiful rewards. I'm sure I'm going to get almost everything. I'm going to be the best staff of the year. Get all <laughs> Definitely. The so shout out to everyone working with Pastor Febby Pastor Fe and um, Reverend Laurie and all the Daoso family doing great things with them. God bless you guys for staying with them. And, you know, she's saying, positive things about you guys that means she's been impressed and job well done to everyone out there thank you ma you named the school after nat yes oh also 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 that's beautiful thank you thank you ma can i tell you a little secret um i think 2012 2012 yes i was i'm, I'm a salesperson i do marketing my kind though i'm an engineer by profession but oh. i dumbled in sales and i kind of find you know rest with marketing and sales and i had to you know sell an it product you know to schools to schools in the southwest and i i think i went to about 16 schools in the southwest i traveled with a fellow engineer and, we, and i'm not sure if he's watching you will remember we went around south and um, the east we didn't go into the core east or close to the south south so we got to um, um 
Bentley 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 Bentley. 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 Yes. You know, and the funny thing, I was looking out for you. I was praying. I was telling the engineer, <laughs> the engineer chef, so I was telling him that, oh God, I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Reverend Laurie. He said, did you just pass? You just pass. I said, what? He was like, what's your problem? Are you here to see? I said, ah, it's double blessing. Let me just Aww. see. Ah, just say hello. So you can see that I've been an admirer for years. And I was, Aww. and luckily, you were in an office with someone. And so when a lady helped me say, I wish I could see Pastor Rory, and I was like, ah, she's right over there. But no, I didn't have the guts to, I didn't have the oh, good no. Who can say hello to you? So I was, I was like, no, 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 no. I just wanted to see and say hello. She was like, no, go. She, she's so very warm. She will say hello to you. And I was yeah, and like, I would have like, oh, your hand. Let us go, let us go. But it was, it was, it was fantastic to know that at least I, I, I was in a place that you were. And I, I felt good, you know, that uh, this is this is somewhere by the great Idaosa. Aww. And I'm, I'm so, I follow almost everybody in the Idaosa family. I follow um, Pastor Feb. I follow the yeah, sister, the one that is into the initiative, helping kidnap ladies, young uh -huh, ladies. There's the room. Yes, yes, I follow her. And I see amazing things that you're doing in the family. Thank you. Thank you that the vision did not die beyond the fact of the gospel. You're also spreading your wigs to other initiatives, and it is applauded. We appreciate the Dawson family. Awesome, awesome family, and job well done. So let's let's round it off with this. America, Nigeria, what do we have to learn from each other? What's the, what's the thing that we should share often? What should we share? Should, should it be about the Nigerian fashion or what should America learn from us? What should Nigeria learn from America? Share with us. What do you think? Gosh, that's not a question I was really thinking about. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I think it's very different for each person. You know, there's things okay. that I wouldn't trade for anything that I've learned from the Nigerian culture. Um, there's so much beauty in it. Uh, but what I see as beautiful might be different than what somebody else sees as beautiful. So I just believe that we should learn, we should we should embrace one another, we should discover one another, um, you know, and not just look at it basically on our cultural side, but just get to know people, get to know their 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 ways of life, their dreams, their visions, their 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 ideas and all of that, and and find a way to um to kind of grasp it and 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 just love the the beauty that god has made by making the world so diverse i don't think that mm. i need to be like nigerians i don't think nigerians need to be like me i think we need to be exactly mm. like how god we made have. us to be and celebrate the diversity that we have in our cultures thank you thank you i like that so it's individuality now it's what yeah. you you know what you love to see what you love to learn thank you so at this, i think this person is coming late he's asking why idaosa why him in all ramification knowing fully well the cultural parallel that why did you have to choose i think she's mentioned it a little in the beginning that because she loves him they grew up together they were teenage friends from childhood so she didn't just know the idaosa family she knew Papa Idaosa. So it was a family, you know, it was a very knitted, you know, close relationship. And of course, like teenagers, we get to know ourselves. And some parents always believe that the, your you, your childhood have a strong, you know, role to play in your life. So those you know why growing up, you know, the effect is stronger. Just any stranger, just anywhere. So I hope I answered your question because she has answered it earlier on. Thank you for that. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much. You have a beautiful smile. Someone <laughs> is saying that. Rosemary. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rosemary. We can never thank you enough. I have so many things to share with you. And I pray when I get to invite you again on the show, you come along and you honor us, you know, and we, we want to thank you. What would you want to say to the people as we round off? What do you want to say to everyone? Oh, well, thank you for your time. First of all, um, we all have opportunities and options of what to do with our time, but you took your time to watch this interview and to um, listen and to give us feedback. And I'd like to say thank you uh, for giving us the time that you gave us to participate in this interview. Um, and I'm looking forward to connecting further with everyone. Um, I can connect further with you um, through my blog, through social media, through okay, yeah. um, many different ways. And, um, and I just believe God that as we connect with one another, we'll have a more rich life and a more rich um, experience. So Amen. thank you. Amen. Amen. You, your first book was supposed to launch it last year. What happened? We were waiting for it. Yeah. So we're still working on it. <laughs> it's a major okay. work okay. in progress. 
You know, it's, okay. it's one of those books that I believe are like the book I'm supposed to write, you know? And so yeah. when you have something that is like the thing that you know you're supposed to do, um, you don't take it, uh, you don't do it uh, carelessly. And I haven't okay. been able to do, put the time into it that I know I need to, to make it excellent. So until I do that, until I prioritize it, it's still going to be on hold. Okay. So, so any new thing, any new thing apart from the book, anything we need to expect from Pastor Laurie, any new thing? Um, well, the main project that I'm working on right now is I'm working with IDPs, uh, with the internally displaced children, especially, and I'm helping to uh, create opportunities for them through education, also opportunities and, and assisting them with food, with shelter and different things. Um, so if anybody wants to participate in that, um, I always encourage people to, to do that. You can do it through our church, Church of God Mission. Um, or you can do it through our ministry here in Delaware, in the U.S., for those that are watching in the U.S., um, you can participate in that way. And just uh, my my whole uh, aim in life is to help people. And, you know, I always say the heart beats happiest when it beats for others. Yeah. And so yeah. I want to encourage like people in general to um, to love one another, to embrace one another, and to look for ways to help and support somebody that's in need. Uh, you may not do it through what I'm doing, but do it in your own way. Look for somebody yeah. who needs love, who needs encouragement, who needs a hand, and um, be there to support and strengthen them. And God's going to honor everything you give. So that's my Amen. Oh, thank you. So much fun having you on the show, Reverend Laurie. Everyone, thank please, you. round of applause for her. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for honoring us. We're grateful. We're so, so grateful. And we've learned a whole lot from your journey, from your story. We've learned so much already. And we hope that we get to use them, you know, to make our lives better. Thank you so much. I like the fact that you said your heart beats, you know, when it beats for other people, it beats faster and better. I like that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Lori. I will have to let you go so that we can have prepared time, you know, to be. Please send our greetings to Mama Idaos. It's a seven, seven birthday. Yay. Awesome. Yay. Please, we are giving a massive shout out on the Rental Live Show. All our friends, all our family, we love you so much. That was a family means a lot to Nigeria. We appreciate them. All the Bini people, we love you guys. My friends that are Bini are showing their face. Show show is from Bini. She's giving you a shout out. She said, Thank you so much, Pastor. Ada says she's going to follow you. Ada is my friend. These are my thank secondary you. school friends. We've been friends in secondary school. Oh, thank giving you. Ada. A Thank you, Ada. Thank you all so Ada, much. Ada. So, <laughs> Ada, Ada. so, before you say bye, can you, you make some pigeon, you know, incantations like we call it? Okay, I trust no. you. No. <laughs> Why? You because that's not my thing. Like, I don't want to be that person that, 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 I'll like, try and say bye in pigeon or something. Can no. you speak the pini? Can you speak the bini dialect? I can, but I don't do it on, I don't do it in interviews and on me, like I do it when I'm ministering or something like that. And I need to communicate a thought, but I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be that person on, I just don't know. Let me just, let me be me. When my Nigerian accent comes out, let it come out. When it doesn't, I don't want to push it out. So sorry. Oh, Tom, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's fine. If you will, at least Jordan has helped us out that at least we know he runs, you know, Jordan has been able to say alpha. Someone said that his alpha is like a but a, a butter alpha, alpha, you know, alpha <laughs> with, <laughs> <share> butter. <laughs> but it's all good. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm grateful. Thank you. I I do not take this for granted. I honor you and I'm so grateful that you what made you just say yes to my email? I've been wanting to ask, what made you say yes when you got the email? You know, I pray over every invitation and I ask God to direct me. And um, and when I feel peace in my spirit to do something, then I do it. Um, mm -hmm. I usually have my team do a bit of research on the person, but I'll be really yeah. honest. In your case, we did not research you ahead of time. I said yes before we researched you. Um, and then oh, I just you. asked my department to uh, my office to go ahead and um, follow up. So, um, oh, yeah, I, I just I, I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, but in Thank fairness, you. I know in the beginning of the episode, you mentioned that a musical artist asked for money and some people asked for yes. remuneration yes. for interviews. Yes. The truth is, during this time of COVID, 
Um, a lot of people were getting their income from pre-COVID. They would get their income from ministering outside, doing music presentations, um, speaking engagements and things like that. I mean, I'm grateful to God that that's not my major Mm -hmm. source of income. But Mm -hmm. for my friends that do have that as a major source of income, um, I do understand completely why they're yes. they're charging that, for these that, things. That's why I said when I have money, I'll definitely, I'll, I wasn't expecting it anyways, but when I have the money, I'll definitely stretch it out. I, I, I do not. I do not. I know that. I know for physical appearance, of course, logistics, you know, availability, you know, for you to bring someone on the show, they built a story for themselves. They built a brand. So I, I pretty understand. But that moment, but right now, I'm still, I'm still like a baby. I'm a chick. I'm still okay. learning. No, understandable, I'm so, understandably I'm so, but I'm just saying that for, for their, yes. in their defense, that, um, yes, yes, that it's, that. it's their livelihood. And many people are really struggling to survive right now um, that, true. that were previously doing very well financially by having, yeah. uh, making appearances and things. Yeah. So there's a shift. In the first few months of the pandemic, people were doing everything for free, uh, the first yeah. few weeks especially. But now that it's become the new normal, a lot no. of people are... Um, mm-hmm. Are, are placing demands. And and for mm-hmm. some cases, I would say rightfully so. Uh, but I thank God that I'm in a position where I don't have to do that. Um, and, and you so, don't have to in Jesus' in name. Jesus name. <laughs> so I'm, I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to just to, to share freely. But I understand completely when, when my friends and my colleagues um, need to ask for, for something. Yeah, I understand. Thank you so much, Reverend Laurie. Please shout out to Mama Boys. Thank you, so much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for honoring us. We are grateful. I'll call um, um, Kigwe. Yes, Kigwe. I got the name right this time around. I'll call him after the show. And my, my deepest appreciation to you, Ma. I'm grateful. I pray God will continue to strengthen you. I pray he continue to overshadow you with his love mm-hmm. and his good. Your home is blessed. Your children are blessed. Mm-hmm. You have stretched your hands to so many helpless people you have supported the less privileged you've shown love you've shown encouragement you're a mentor you're a coach and you've blessed a whole lot of lives and i pray that your source of blessing will never run dry Amen. and i pray that your children will eat the benefit even their children children generations yet unborn will be blessed of your good works thank you so much to pastor idaosa Baby, for allowing you to fly, for allowing you to spread your wings. We appreciate him. We give him a massive shout out wherever he is. We say thank you, sir. Thank you. And to your amazing songs. And to Jordan. You see why I and Jordan Judah, connect- Judah, Judah, Judah. Judah, sorry. You see why, why we, we kind of connected. You know, he was able to, you know, flow it, uh, on the show. Please, our regards to him and to Nat, you know, Nat too. And of course, to Febby Jr. We love them. We appreciate them. And we say God bless them. Thank you so much, Ma. We'll chat you up after the show. Have a wonderful evening and happy birthday to Mama Idaosa. Good evening. Thank you Ma. so much. We love you guys. We appreciate the opportunity. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for coming online. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I am grateful. <laughs> oh, it's been amazing having Reverend Lori Itaosa on the show. She's an amazing woman, a great, a fantastic one. Very humble, very, very humble, intelligent. You can hear from my responses of the questions. Something to always learn from her, all the things she said. You know, if you want to, you know, show what the gifts God has given you, take time to be behind learn the rope, see how it is being done. You just show yourself and say, I need to do this. I know what I carry. Yes, you know what you carry. But take your time, you know, to prove to people around you if they don't accept you immediately, show them the positivity that you carry, show them the love that you have to give. It doesn't have to be by violence. It doesn't have to be difficult. You know, you don't have to play difficult. Just see how they do their things. Like she said, I love what she said. You don't expect a whole family to change because of you. You don't expect a whole nation to change because of you. There's something that you also need to be the added value. She said that she got married to Feb, uh, Pastor Feb, beyond the love. She knew she added value to his life as well. So be the added value. You know, be the change, be the, the extra, the extra that they want to see. Be amazing, you know, to yourself and to everyone around you. And like you said, the heart beats better when it beats for other people. Try in your own little way. You don't have to do missionary work. You don't have to go into the ministry. You, co- you can be a teacher. You can be 
you know, it can be anything. You can be a fashion designer. You know, I had to showcase my friends that do my, do my fashion work for me because I see what they go through all the time. It's been very hard for them during this COVID period. And in my only two way, I had to help promote the business. I didn't have money to give them, you know, but I know what they do all the time. It's not easy. Nobody's going to parties anymore. No one is going for events. So I had to promote what they do. So in your own little way, promote what your friends do. I see it all the time. I see a lot of people comment on celebrities' posts, comment and put all that. But you have your friends that are struggling in their business and you will not even like or even comment on their post. And if you have the power to patronize them, please do support. Let's support the people that you know. You know, I'm not saying, we should, of course, we should support the celebrity as well. But there are some close friends of yours that need your support, like their post. Even when you don't understand what they are doing, you can always DM them to for them to explain further to you. Like what they do. Support your friends. Support. It's so key. It's so important. And I tell you, when you do that, strangers will raise with, you know, they will, they will help you blow your trumpet but you need to start from you from yourself from the people around you blow the trumpet of those around you and of course the whole world will blow it as well as well so please let's start from that that's my tip from the day from what i learned from pastor pastor uh, you know reverend laurie and i'm so grateful for her honoring our invitation please today is uh, mama dawson's birthday say a word of prayer for her that god will keep and god will protect her thank you all for coming online god bless your home god bless the works of your hand god bless all that you do and god bless everything about you in jesus name jesus is the way is the truth is the life is everything whatever you need right now look up to him and i know he will answer you no matter how difficult the situation is there is nothing pastor reverend febby said it that she had they did ivf very expensive very rigorous and they still lost the baby but afterwards natural birth three boys three amazing beautiful boys God bless them with. God will do sin for you. If you are trusting God for the fruits of the womb, if you are trusting God for marital settlement, the God Almighty will do yours in a more fantastic way in Jesus' name. Have a lovely evening. Stay safe. If you are in public place, try and keep social distance. Use your, use your marks. Wash your hands. Be safe. Spend time with family and go for your dreams. Remember what we always say on the show, the day you wake up to your dreams, is your morning. Have a fantastic evening. Good night, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Please like the, like the video on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube if you are yet to subscribe and put your comments and your feedback. We appreciate your lovely evening. Bye. Uh.